Hello everyone, welcome back, and welcome to the first edition of what am I going to call Brain Food or Smart Stuff. I'm filming during the day, and the first thing we're talking about is Platonism versus Formalism, so let's jump straight in. A good idea when thinking about a brand new concept for the first time is to start with a question. And the fundamental question of what we're talking about today, Platonism versus Formalism, is when a mathematician touches upon new material for the first time in the history of mankind, are they creating that relationship, or are they merely discovering it? Now let's take your man Pythagoras, because this is a relationship you probably already know from maths, that if you take a right angle triangle, and there's a 90 degree angle in it, and if you make a square from one of the sides and a square from the other two sides each, that the area of the larger square has area equal to the two areas of the smaller squares added together. That relationship, did he create it, or did he discover it? Was it always there for him to uncover with his mind, or has he created this as it's gone along? Those who say that he did create the concept are called formalists, and those who say that it didn't are called Platonists. Now I'm going to talk about the Platonist side more, because I find it a lot more interesting. So the idea that all mathematical relationships already exist in nature is an interesting and profound one. Because if they already exist, then in what way do they exist? Because they're abstract concepts. You can't pick something up and say this, this is one plus one. This, this concept, I've just picked up addition. I'm holding addition in my hand. It's not, it's not a real thing. It's not tangible. You can't touch it. You can't touch multiplication. You can see the effects of it, but you can't touch it. Neither it, is it really a force. It doesn't really have a, a, a... Well, we call them gauge particles in physics, but it doesn't really have a way of acting out, a measurable way of acting out its effect, if you see what I mean. It doesn't really touch the world, but it's part of it. Now, this is really interesting, because it exists, but it's intangible. And it's not intangible in the way that it's just so small that we can't touch it, like like electromagnetism, or the strong force in atoms, and we'll probably talk about that at a later date. It's intangible in a way that it's just mind-bogglingly abstract. These relationships just seem to be there. Just They just seem to sort of exist. And you can posit all sorts of ideas as to how they might come about. I mean... In a similar way, the Japanese in the in the Shinto religion came up with a different spirit for every single type of existence in nature. So the, the fire and the onion spirit and all sorts of things like that. And you might you might, if you were theologically minded, spiritually minded, come up with something similar for mathematical ideas. The <laughs> spirit of integration, perhaps. Roger Penrose came up with the idea that all these mathematical I ideas exist in somewhat of a, a parallel realm, and that when we're thinking about mathematics, our mind touches this realm. All this seems really supernatural and weird, but it falls out of logical ideas. It falls out of logic and of empirical evidence. And this is one thing that I find so fascinating about higher thought and philosophy, is that you can start with a very basic question, and come through logically and seemingly correctly, and with the right amount of rigour, and come through to this beautiful idea, these strangenesses that just blow you away. And that's kind of some of the things that I like to talk about in this series as we go on. And I mean, we'll do some things to do with the physical world as well. I mean, I'm, I'm a physicist by trade. I, I, I do a physics degree. So I'd like to talk about those. But that was just to give you a touch and a taste of the kind of thing that I want to talk about. And I want to know whether this was too difficult or too dense. I can always tone it down. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see you at the weekend when some of you asked about my music collection. So I'll show you that perhaps. And I'll talk about some of the things that's been going on. Maybe some news comment. No one likes a news commenter, but I might <laughs> do a bit. Alright, see you. See you then.